Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Today, all the pieces we're presenting, um, they've all been become classics in their own right. And uh, I need to tell you, unfortunately, that there are some pieces missing. On the second half, we start out with Walter Mays's uh, Six Incantations of the Svara Mandala. After that, there will be a piece called Toccata, which I'll be talking about in just a second. And as well, after that, the last piece on the program is a piece called Past Midnight by Tom Geiger. Toccata, which as I said, second piece on the second half, uh, was written by a gentleman named Carlos Chavez. It was written in 1942, and it was commissioned by his friend and colleague, John Cage. As it's one of the first standalone pieces written for solo, uh, for solely for percussion, it's really one of the most important pieces in our repertoire. Chavez is known for his orchestral works, but Toccata remains one of the pieces that is more often played than any of his other repertoire. Another ca uh, classic, the second piece we're performing today, is called October Mountain, also written in 1942 by Alan Hovannis. When he was attending the famous summer music festival, Tanglewood, in, Mass in Massachusetts. He apparently named the piece after many visits to October Mountain State Park, which is located near the festival. Hovannis composed October Mountain utilizing elements of West Indian music as well as the 12 tone row, this system developed by composers like Arnold Schoenberg. Throughout each of the five short movements, Hovannis uses the Indian tala for the non-melodic percussion instruments. A tala is an inter, uh, a, uh, Indian musical tradition of repeated rhythmical cycles. And he does that for each one of the instruments. Though I would be conducting in a two pattern or a four pattern, these cycles will be somewhere between six and a half beats or 11 and a half beats, depending on which movement we're playing. Although all the pieces that we're performing will be visually stimulating, two of the pieces on tonight's program include specific visual cues. Rain Tree by Toro Takamitsu is an exploration of rain in a forest based on Takamitsu's Japanese affinity for nature. The 21st uh, century composer Mary Ellen Childs has become a modern classic by creating a brand new repertoire that she bases on both rhythm and movement. The piece we're performing, which is the, um, you'll, you'll hear on the first half, is called Hands, and that was premiered by her special percussion group called Crash. Past Midnight was written by my mentor, um, Tom Geiger. In the mid-60s, Tom wrote a piece called Gainsborough, and this was quite groundbreaking for the kind of music that was being created for percussion ensemble because it was based on the combination of melody and jazz and popular harmony. Since then, his music has become a staple for percussion ensembles worldwide, and the percussion ensemble composers, or people who write for percussion ensemble, continue to use and to emulate his compositional style. Currently, though, it's Walter Mays' work, The Six Invocations to the Svara Mandala, that is probably the most influential piece in our repertoire. In The Six Invocations, Walter explored, created, and combined new sounds and new techniques that composers now use as their standard practice for their compositions. In the 1970s, after joining the faculty of WSU, Walter won the prestigious Nomberg Recording Award, as well as the first prize in composition at the 1974 Percussive Art Society International Convention. So, tonight, we celebrate Dr. Walter Mays, a classic among the classics. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Uh, before we start, because Walter created all those sounds I was talking about, I really wanted to give you a chance before we played the piece to kind of get a sense of some of these sounds that he created and worked with others in order to create them. So we're gonna start first with the bass. Now, when Walter first came to WSU, the professor of bass was a guy named Glenn Holmes, an incredible uh, bass player specifically on fretless electric bass, which is what he wrote for. The two of them got together and really worked out some very interesting sounds. So we're going to hear from Roberto um, both glissandos going up and down that he utilizes in the piece, as well as using a conventional bass bow that you would use for an orchestral bass on the instrument in order to create uh, harmonics. <laughs> Next, I want to talk about another instrument that he used. Um, he originally wrote, although it was kind of a, a number of different instruments that could be used for this in particular part, uh, for musical saw. And uh, he also wrote that the musical saw, if we didn't have one, could be used either by a vocalist singing the part or by the use of a synthesizer. Now, Walter was very gifted at the musical saw, so the other two performances that we did, we were lucky enough to have him to uh, produce the beautiful musical saw sound. So lucky to have Dr. David McDonald uh, as part of our faculty, as a, both a composer and a theorist, uh, and an incredible friend who helped create this sound that we're using for synthesizer that definitely mimics that idea of the musical thaw, saw and the theremin. Fantastic. Okay, next, a lot of times you will hear in movies, um, especially older movies, you'll hear thunder being created by a piece of metal that's called a thunder sheet. And we're going to have that demonstrated. But in his piece, as he writes it, it incorporates as part of other sounds. So not just the idea of thunder or that very specific special effect, but one that actually incorporates with other instruments. So the thunder sheet. Perfect, thank you. Now, he was also very inventive with the use of metal instruments as well as glass. So the next thing we're going to hear are the use of gongs, again using the bow in order to create harmonics. And then you'll see the second demonstration is where you use the bow back and forth on the edge of the gong uh, or the tam-tam in order to create kind of a sound of the wind. Now the wind. It's very delicate. <laughs> Thank you. Next, we have bowed vibes. Bowed vibes, again, using this instrument, instead of striking it with a mallet and using a bow, we get this very pure kind of tone. Now, when we see it later on in the piece, besides Miranda, who will be playing this instrument, we'll also have three others to accompany her while they're playing, two on one side where the accidentals are and the other with where the naturals are, and they'll play them together. Now, if you've been to any of our concerts before, last year we actually performed a piece by Elliot Cole called Postludes, and there's no question that Elliot must have learned this idea of using four players on the vibraphone 
from a piece written in the early 1970s by Walter Mays and that influence. And not only him, but so many other uh, composers of the 21st century use this same technique in many of their pieces. Next, we're going to listen to the idea of using glass or goblets and the sound of placing the bow and creating a sound from the goblet. with two notes together. Thank you. A very interesting instrument he uses is the toy piano. That's a pretty rare and kind of a bit creepy, this instrument, but he liked it. And let's listen to what the toy piano sounds like. Thank you, Adrian. Next, we're going to talk about the piano itself because, again, there's no question that Walter was also influenced like the other composers, although I only spoke of one of them, but all of them were influenced by John Cage. And John Cage loved creating what they call prepared piano. Now, we don't prepare this one, but we do use it in a number of different ways besides its normal use. So we're going to listen to what the muted piano sounds like. Now, one of the percussionists is not only playing instruments like bongos and glockenspiel, but it's also called the piano assistant. And so we're going to listen to glissandos on the inside of the piano. That's why we don't have the lid on, as well as, uh, and those, those glissandos would be played with triangle beaters inside the instrument, as well as what it sounds like when you use uh, xylophone mallets in the instrument as well. Thank you. And now, the six invocations of the Svara Mandala.
Well, we, um, okay. Are we on? Maybe yes. Okay, no, looks like no sound. All right, a um, couple of announcements I wanted to make. And first of all, thank you all for, so much for coming. Um, I wanted to let you know that on the 28th, there we go, uh, my good friend and colleague, Lynn Davis, will be performing with the Wichita uh, State University Orchestra over at Wiedemann. And on Sunday, December 3rd, one of my students, Jared Hearn, uh, who's a member of the IPG, will be performing his senior recital and really great music, and I urge you to attend if you can. On the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, uh, WSU is presenting their annual uh, candlelight concerts directed by Dr. Tom Wine and Dr. Ryan Beacon. So again, lots of events going on right now. Next semester, I wanted to tell you about a wonderful opportunity for you. Um, February 19th and 21st, we will have a guest from our sister city in Orléans, France, uh, Vincent Mitterrand, uh, principal trumpet of the Orléans Symphony, will be here. He will join forces with our faculty. I will be performing with him as part of our new faculty chamber series and the connoisseur series, performing Stravinsky's L'Histoire de Soldat with the original French libretto. Then on the 21st of February, he will perform the Tomasi Concerto. As you can see, it's a bit of a French theme with our WSU Wind Ensemble. Uh, also, I'd like you to put on your calendars April 17th, which is our next uh, Impulse Percussion Group concert, where if you have attended before, I spoke about uh, really promoting our alumni. And uh, this, some, uh, this spring will be no different. We'll be inviting Andrew Gilstrap, uh, who was one of my first graduate students. Um, he actually 
uh, played this concerto, we're going to be doing a vibraphone concerto by Ney Rosaro, and he performed that for um, a wonderful kind of educational series for the Vic Firth and Zildjian Company. So actually, if you go online, you can actually see the Ney Rosaro vibraphone concerto being performed by uh, Andrew. Um, next up is Tom Geiger's Past Midnight, and I wanted to let you know that I received a message uh, for the IPG from Tom, wishing them a great performance and new plans of a co-commission uh, with Tom writing his newest work, hopefully to be premiered here at WSU next year. Last, I wanted to thank Carrie Bynum, David Mule from Performance Facilities, and the students, specifically uh, Jaden and Gabe, who have been doing both the lights and everything on the stage for us. So please give them a round of applause, and thank you so much.